the Treaty of Waitangi, while we concentrate on what happened, the signing at Waitangi itself, we have to remember that, in fact, it encompassed the whole, the whole country. And it's relevant to many other places. It's not just relevant to that one place, uh, a peninsula in the Bay of Islands. In Te Tiriti, the words in the reo refer to hapu. And that is because hapu is also the word which means to be pregnant or to be swelling with life. And so it was at the hapu level that the important life and death decisions were made. Decisions to go to war, to make peace, to treat. As an archivist, the treaty is like public record number one. It was a very brave document. It was an attempt to set up a new, a new world, really. There's a tendency today to see it as something way back in the past. It's outdated. Uh, it's an agreement that was made in a different world. And things have changed so much it's no longer relevant. I take a totally different view. So I like to think of it as um, my passport. I was born here. It's a document that allowed me to be born here. The British signed treaties with indigenous peoples all around the world, lots of them, um, as the empire was extended, as particularly in the 19th century and early 20th century. It was uh, an embracing of the modern. Um, and I think that's a really good thing for our country because it, um, it's the way we started out. We can all find something immediately relevant and useful in the treaty in this document, 176 years old. There's another uh, party to the treaty, however, that's Nahapu o Aotearoa, and um, the treaty was uh, agreed to by Rangatira from many iwi around the country, more than 500 of them signed that treaty. The English copy of the treaty pretty much, uh, and the Māori one, pretty much reflected the instructions that Hobson had, which would have allowed Māori a degree of running their own affairs in a shared kind of governance of the country. Now, in today's world, if we listen to a document being read, it goes in one ear and out the other, and we don't remember where we simply couldn't even summarise it accurately. But these were people who had a long history uh, of, of oral communication and the recording of the events of the past and everything that mattered to them orally. So they heard and they remembered and they passed it on. That shows us that these old documents are alive and that they inform our lives now just as they inform the lives of the people who made them. And I think it's the, the line we have to hold to, that we're not afraid of doing big things here, and that we were started in a spirit of optimism.